Well, hey everyone, thanks so much for joining us here on Up With Krim. I'm Channing Curtis. This morning we are waking up to more snow across our region. So whether you're traveling to your holiday destination or just driving to work this morning, we do have team coverage to prepare you for the morning commute. Nicole Hernandez is out on the roads letting us know how snow is impacting travel all across our city. And Jeremy Lagoo is in the Outdoor Weather Center. So let's go ahead and check in with our meteorologist first because Jeremy, we want to know can we expect to see any more snow today? And also, how's that snowman coming along? It looks pretty good. Uh, it's actually coming along quite well. I'm going to give Nicole a run for her money. It's taken all day, but we're getting there. Got to give him a couple little eyes, maybe a nose. We've got arms at least, but yes, we do have snow on the ground. We're waking up to about an inch and a half here in town, a little closer to two inches on the top of the South Hill, but temperatures hovering pretty close to freezing. We're at 30 degrees right now, and it is a winter wonderland. As you step outside, I can hear Regal moving along just nicely, and now that packed snow is turning into a bit of slush. That's as temperatures rise, not here, but everywhere. 33 in Coeur d'Alene, 32 in Sandpoint. Moses Lake still in some thick freezing fog with temperatures hanging out at 29 degrees. Up and over snow, Kwame Pass, you're still under that winter storm warning. I think you're going to see about six inches there. Elsewhere in the Cascades, up to 13 inches falls by 10 a.m. tomorrow. The reason I think you're good over Snoqualmie or seeing less over Snoqualmie is because it's warm enough that most of that is going to be rain throughout the day today. We're going to see our next push of moisture arrive later on, and no, unfortunately, it is not going to be snow. We get a push of rain that moves into central Washington, then makes its way toward us. Northeastern Washington, North Idaho, you're in the snow. Spokane, Coeur d'Alene, uh, even as far north as I'd say Deer Park and down into places like uh, the Palouse in Washington. It's going to be all rain and that's going to melt a decent amount of the snow that we have on the ground. In fact, tomorrow morning we get another push of moisture and temperatures look to remain warm enough that that stays as rain as well. The saving grace is that a Christmas miracle is still possible. Colder temps by Friday morning means that we wake up to a round of white snow. Hopefully that's enough to kind of blanket us with even more white come Christmas Day. Temperatures are on the rise though, and shooting for 40 degrees this afternoon means things are going to get slushy quick. Nicole, how's it looking out there and how are the snowmen coming along? Uh, I am ahead of the game this time around. My snowman's finished already, and I know you said yours might be coming along better, but look at how cute and chubby mine is. I made him rounder, like bigger and wider, and I think he's really cute this time. Um, we're up here north. The roads are bad. And despite how cute the snowmen have been turning out because of how much snow we got, it's also causing trouble for our roads, which has really not been the best for going all around town this morning. Uh, we have been driving up here north. We've been on the South Hill. We have been downtown this morning. And everywhere we go, this is what we're looking like. Uh, this road is actually looking kind of decent compared to some of the other roads. Obviously, we, we've got a, a, this is our main arterial, right? This is division here that we're looking at. So this is where the most of the cars are going to be going over. Uh, we're getting to the point where it's so, hello. We're starting to warm up just enough uh, to where things are starting to uh, with friction with the cars kind of calm down. But like Jeremy mentioned, it's just going to start turning into slush, especially on those side roads and in parking lots and such where there's still such a huge layer of snow and ice there. As soon as it starts warming up and starts raining, that's just going to turn to slippery, slippery conditions. So even if you're getting out of the house now or in a few hours, no matter when you're leaving or when you're going home, uh, just be careful on the roads. Give yourself time to go slow. We've seen quite a few cars this morning going a little bit too fast and slipping and sliding. Uh, they were able to recover all the cars we noticed, but you know, sometimes it doesn't always work out that way. So just make sure you're slowing down, uh, being extra careful, giving cars uh, uh, extra room around you because we are very much in the thick of winter driving. So we're going to keep moving. We're going to start heading back uh, south now, but for now, I'll send things back to you. Well, today the FDA is expected to authorize COVID-19 treatment pills from both Pfizer and Merrick. That's according to Bloomberg News, who cited people familiar with the matter. Merrick's pill was narrowly authorized by a panel of advisors to the FDA on November 30th. In a clinical trial of high-risk individuals early in their illness, the, this pill was shown to reduce hospitalizations and deaths by about 30 percent. In the meantime, Pfizer's pill showed nearly 90 percent efficacy in preventing hospitalizations and deaths in high-risk patients. The U.S. does have a contract to buy as many as 5 million cases of Merrick's drug and 10 million of Pfizer's. 
Well, yesterday, President Biden detailed what his administration is doing to combat the Omicron variant. He explained that he would be creating federal COVID-19 testing sites in New York City this week, where the positivity rate is spiking. He's also introducing a plan to buy 500 million at-home rapid tests that Americans can order for free online. He's also expressing that kids should stay in schools. If our K through 12 schools open, that's exactly what we should be doing. So folks, let me summarize. We should all be concerned about Omicron, but not panicked. In the meantime, Spokane Public Schools is piloting the Test to Stay program in several schools. So Test to Stay was recently endorsed by the CDC and will allow people who have tested positive for COVID-19 or allow their close contacts rather to remain in the classroom through regular testing and contact tracing. So students registered in this program will be able to attend class in a modified quarantine status for seven days after exposure to COVID, but only if that student is tested for COVID, is asymptomatic and continues to wear a mask. For more information on the program, you should reach out to your child's school directly. 807, now it's time for your morning rush. More news in less time. A Spokane father accused of dealing deadly pills is in jail after his one and a half year old daughter overdosed on fentanyl. 31 year old Frank Marusic has been charged in her death. For details on his arrest and other charges, you can visit our website, crimp.com. The 36-year-old suspect in the kidnapping of a 15-year-old Lewiston girl pleaded not guilty to six charges in county court yesterday. Jonathan Bowles is facing first-degree kidnapping, third-degree assault, and possession of a stolen vehicle, among other charges. According to court documents, the two had been talking for months before he picked her up from a church near her high school in Lewiston. Bowles remains in the Spokane County Jail on a million-dollar bond. His trial is set to begin on February 14th. Washington Attorney General Bob Ferguson announced yesterday the claims process is now open in the civil rights case against Greyhound bus lines. So Greyhound passengers who were detained, arrested or deported after U.S. agents approached them while boarding their buses in Spokane are eligible for a share of $2.2 million. That money Greyhound paid to resolve Ferguson's suit. Well, the quickly spreading Omicron variant is already impacting our chances for a Cougar Bowl game. So WSU is supposed to play the University of Miami on December 31st. But yesterday, we learned the Hurricanes football program has entered COVID-19 protocols. The University of Miami says it is still committed to participating in the Sun Bowl game. That game is scheduled to air on CRIM 2 on December 31st. That's your morning rush. Still to come on up with Krim, we're looking into a predominantly white industry and how one organization is trying to add some diversity. And the one thing you need to know about weather, snow on the mountain passes. Right now, things look pretty good heading up and over snow Kwame. I'd go now if you can. If you're waiting until tomorrow, well, it's going to be a lot of snow no matter which way you're headed. It is time now for your wake up call. So many people have sent us in their snow photos this morning, but we want to keep them coming. Go ahead and send us your photos of your snowmen, your snow angels, all of the above. As always, you drive the conversation on this show. So go ahead and text us those photos at 509-448-2000 or head on over to social media, post your photos there and use the hashtag up with Krim when you do. But before we head to break, we are taking another live look outside. As you can see, a lot of the roads out there still have a, quite a bit of snow on them. So be careful if you're heading out for a morning commute, if you're going to work, or even if you're just going to run some errands this morning, drive slowly and give yourself some extra time. You know what though? I love some snow and there is snow place like the Inland Northwest. So good morning to everyone watching us on this glorious Wednesday morning. Let us know where you're watching from. You can text us 509-448-2000. Go ahead and grab another cup of coffee. We have more Up With Crim after the break.